This is Star Talk. In the next few years, maybe 10, 15, 20 at most, uh, what do you see as one of the most promising and fascinating technological advances to benefit humanity that you will be watching with great interest? I don't write about it, but genomics. I'm really fascinated to see what's going to happen in an ethical way. This is the big key. The technology, swords and plowshares, guys. It's morally neutral. It's what we do with it. From the beginning of humanity to the future of humanity. So with genome alteration, we could do some incredible things to stop horrible diseases, to create longevity, to create a happier humanity, but we got to do it right. <laughs> Don't forget making a minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite uh, comic version of genomic stuff are the Inhumans, right? Uh, the, the, they expose their children, their babies, to the Terrigen mists, and then they wind up with very unusual and interesting mutations. And it's only the royal family that gets it, but anybody else who wants it. And then over the decades, of course, people have messed with it a lot. Right, and you mentioned this a little bit earlier. The idea of pluses and minuses, right, and and good actors and bad actors using genomics. Is there a, a particular fear you have for using genomics in a bad way? Is in in the next twenty years, not like far far future stuff, but but what could we really do bad aside from say creating a super germ that kills ninety nine point nine percent of us and turns the rest of us into zombies? When right. We die? Aside aside from the classic sci fi runaway bug or runaway anything scenario. I think it's the, uh, I'm actually afraid of the homogenization of humanity. Yes. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm afraid that people will think that there's a certain advantage that's preferable, that everyone will start to want that. I'm really interested in the therapeutic value right now. I want to see diseases go away as much as possible. Um, but when we start making the designer baby thing, while on one hand you could argue that it's a moral necessity to create children who will not have the problems of the past, you could also argue that you don't want them to be created in a way that just gets rid of our differences. Now, Emily, I, this might uh, resonate with you just a little bit because, as we all know, you have a, a star. My own designer baby. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. Uh, and what I want to ask you, sort of the same question. Do you, for, let's... Let's go with PJ's idea first, and this idea of designer babies from a very personal point of view as you're thinking about the next month or, or years to come. Yeah. Uh, and then sort of your idea of what may be a technological advance or some sort of scientific advance in the next few years that might really move us forward in a way that's uh, remarkable. I think looking at Comic-Con, it's kind of hard to imagine that we could at ever homogenize humanity. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like this is this is my first Comic Con and Oh, we have to yeah. give her a hand for that one. It is All right. Just, it is amazing. I have never like this you know, I tend to dress like this kind of normally because I of my fashion blog and stuff, and I have never felt so underdressed in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just amazing. And also like the Yeah. What, what, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> technology. Yes, technology and, and ch children right now, but then 20 years from now, yeah. what, what will your child you know, be <sighs> doing that we are, you know, like, I can't work this. Here, fix it for me. I and, can't even and, and think about your child it. child will be like, yeah. no, this is easy. Look, this is, this is part of life, you know? I mean, okay, this is a little bit personal, but also, like, I would not be pregnant if I were born 30 years ago because I had IVF. Oh. Okay, and so that's like something that did not exist, was not readily accessible in my parents' generation. Ah. And it's something like if you, you know, ask like a handful of women, you, if you're more likely to do it on the Upper East Side. But, you know, if you ask the pregnant woman, like one out of two were <laughs> are pregnant using IVF. And so it's like it's actually a fairly commonplace thing, which is fantastic. And it's, you know, it's not quite designer babies. I think it's very, very ethical. Um, but it's. 
It's fantastic to think about, you know, living in this time when so many things that just weren't possible a little while ago are now entirely possible I, and I remember who knows a, what's going to yeah. be happening in the future. I remember as a child the first in vitro fertilized children. It was a huge test, what, two babies test tube baby. Involved. Yeah, it's and, actually like and much... They, it was a tremendous moral issue. People were protesting some of these doctors saying, you know, you are creating Frankensteins and monsters and so forth. And a decade later, decades later... PJ, but it's you know. always the same argument. We've had the same argument about the natural order of things that you could actually just take out the technology and we've had the same argument since the Middle Ages. Hey, if you like this, please remember everything that we do can be found commercial free plus exclusive original content all on StarTalkAllAccess.com.